Buenos dias, mis amigos. Now, I'm watching this video on Revelation 20, the Millennium, by Dana Gelsenchen. And uh, he goes off of Revelation 20. It's just brilliant. You're, hey, I'm going to talk about Revelation 20, and then, but first of all, let's talk about something entirely different. That's fine, okay. But let's listen to what he has to say in regards to the beast of Revelation and, uh, you know, specifically uh, Revelation 13. And so we see a lot of events taking place in this world that many people, even that aren't even Christians, see this as apocalyptic. And so we need to be prepared for what is soon to come upon us. And Jesus' first words to his disciples when they asked about when would the end be and what would the signs be, and his first words were, be not deceived. And I personally believe that... <clears throat> yeah, that's, he's right. It, it, his first words are, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying that I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now that's very, uh, very interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Right? Because... This is exactly what we ought to expect to see as we inch closer and closer to the end of this world. And, of course, it's also important to understand that if God allowed things to play out as they are playing out, there would come a point where there would be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So... The closer and closer we get, the fewer and fewer people there will be that there will be saved on the earth. And if you're not saved, you're not going to understand the word of God. Okay? The veil is going to be upon their hearts. And so it just makes sense that there are more and more deceivers in the world today right just like what we read in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 15 and 16 even unto this day when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away so the obvious problem is not very many people today actually believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They what what I'm seeing is a whole bunch of people believing in themselves to be saved. And that that's an obvious problem. But let's continue. I believe that there's a lot of under, misunderstanding in regards to prophecy and even this subject of the millennium. And so it is God's desire, I believe, for us to understand these clearly that we be not deceived because God loves everyone on this earth and he wishes that none be deceived that they miss out on the opportunity of spending eternity with him. So let's move forward. Now in order to properly understand the millennium, I believe we need to look again, as I mentioned earlier, of the events that lead up to this. It's going to help shape our understanding of the millennium. And I want to begin, now I'm going to really condense history here in a short few minutes. And, and he's going to get it wrong, and I'm going to show you very easily, and it's, it's incredible because what he's about to describe has nothing to do with the vision being shown in Revelation 20, but let's listen. But I have other presentations that you can go back and look at that deal with uh, Revelation chapter 13. I want to give this in a few minutes here, but you can go back and look at that. And it's going to help us to understand um, what the millennium is about. And we're going to look at some other events that take place after Revelation 13 that will give us understanding of this. So in Revelation 13, we see that there is a beast, this first beast, which we understand is to be the Roman Catholic Church. Hey, 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 all right, hey, we're off to a good start. Well, wait a second. Did he say first beast? Well, that's uh, a little bit of a problem. All right, let's listen. Now, the Roman Catholic Church ruled for a time, times, and a half a time. This we called the Dark Ages. Uh, we? What, you got a turd in your pocket? 
Now, what they did is they brought church and state together to enforce their false doctrines or the one. Yeah, you're you're almost there, buddy. You're almost there. You just you skipped it. You missed it. You missed it. You had a, you have it right there, and you're fumbling it. And you, I'm going to show very easy, very simply. Wine of the wrath of Babylon. And they pressed this upon the world, but they received a deadly wound. They lost their civil power. But in Revelation 13, it also tells us there's going to rise up another beast. This one had two horns like a lamb. We understand this to be the United States of America. All right, you just you fell flat on your face right there. You're just making stuff up, and you got no basis for anything that you're saying, and you're just spouting ridiculousness. Now, what you've done is you've taken the Antichrist that is real and then placed it, misplaced it, onto another entity that has no no uh, uh, it, it, what you're claiming doesn't make any sense man Cause when you read Revelation 17 for example this beast or this uh, you know whatever you want to call it whatever you want to call it let's go to Revelation 17 this woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Now, um, your obvious problem is going to be, well, that woman in you know, the United States, well, no, it can't be the United States. Let me show you why. All right, I'm going to try to make this real simple. All right, first of all, it's very important to understand the book of Daniel. I mean, we're talking 12 chapters. It takes about five minutes to read a chapter. You can read the book of Daniel in one hour. Easy. It might take me a little bit longer because I'm slow and I'm dumb. But a lot of smart people out there can easily read the book of Daniel in under an hour. You'll spend 45 minutes easy watching a Netflix series. You can't spend five minutes, ten minutes reading a chapter or two in the Bible. Uh, there's something wrong with the heart, if that's the case, right? I want to encourage you to read the book of Daniel, if you're interested in this stuff. Because Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. All right, let's see if I can find exactly where he talks about this. Let's see, where is this at? Fourth kingdom, four beasts, four beasts, four, well, I went right over it, didn't I? Oh, there it is, right there. Daniel 7, verse 17. These great beasts, which are four, <coughs> are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Now, this is very simple stuff. Very simple stuff. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Alright, now, I mean, just based on these two verses, really, we can conclude... I mean, it's it's obvious. It's overwhelmingly obvious. But if you read the book of Daniel, if you read these prophecies on the four beasts, it's overwhelmingly obvious that after the fourth beast, it is the end of the world. Okay? Now, it's, it is uh, important to know that there is hope <laughs> that the saints of the Most High will live forever. All right, in verse 18, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. All right, so we got four kings, which are four beasts, which is four kingdoms, until the end of the world. Daniel mentions the first three beasts by name. 
Nobody can dispute that. The first beast being Babylon, the second being the Medes and the Persians, and the third being the Greek Empire. All right, knowing that the Greek Empire was no longer in power at the time of baby Jesus being born. You know that, right? Knowing that, then you have to conclude that when baby Jesus was born, we are in this fourth beast moment in time, right? So, who is the fourth beast of Daniel? This is very important, right? Now, by reading the New Testament, we can conclude that the fourth beast has to be the Roman Empire. Has to be. You, you can't argue against it. Now, think about what this guy says. All right, This guy says that the beast of Revelation is the Roman Catholic Church. Well, he's close. He's close because he said it was the first beast. He's a little bit off, just a little bit off. But he's close. The fourth beast has to be the Roman Empire. All right, the that's it. Right after the Roman Empire, it is the end of the world. Right. If I could go back to Daniel 7. After the fourth beast, or the fourth king, which is the kingdom, then it's the end of the world, and of course the beginning of ever the eternal world, right? Very simple. It's not complicated. It's straightforward. Matter of fact. Four kings. Then it's the end of this world. And then we have the everlasting kingdom. So. Beginning in the New Testament. We know that the fourth king is in power. We know it's the Romans. The Romans killed the Lord Jesus. The Jews had them, forced them to kill him. But then again, Jesus laid down his life. He could have prevented it all, but he laid down his life for us. All right? So, the fourth king has to be the Roman Empire. Has to be. You can't stray it beyond that. I like this guy did. You can't do it. Because then you are in conflict with the Word of God. Alright? Your eyes are closed at this point. Because you're essentially calling Daniel a liar. You're saying Daniel lied when he prophesied about the four kings or the four beasts until the end of the world all right so let's understand this the beast of revelation has to be the beast of or the fourth beast excuse me the fourth beast of daniel has to be there's no wiggle room there's no wiggle room whatsoever. The issue, obviously, what we're seeing here is he's calling the first beast. Here we could do it this way, I guess. What do we got here? Revelation 13, Revelation 17. Let's do it this way. All right, let's go see if we can do this here. Oh, no, can't do that. Okay, here we go. Did I? Oh, I already opened it. Alright, okay. So, the first beast, the first beast exercises, 
and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. All right, talking about all. Oh, I'm sorry. And I held, beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. He spake as a dragon. Then he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, there's only one possible way to understand this. There's only one possible explanation that does not conflict with the Word of God, and that is the first beast has to be the Roman Empire. Yeah, there's no wiggle room there. So the other beast that comes up out of the earth has to also be the Roman Empire. There's no wiggle room. It has to be the same entity. The difference between this first beast and another beast that comes up the difference is one was a physical empire and the second being a spiritual empire all right that's the only possibility in it's also, uh, I mean, very important to understand. This is a vision being shown to John by an angel of the Lord Jesus Christ to show us things which must shortly come to pass. And we read that in Revelation 1, verse 1. And it seems to me like a lot of people miss that. And if you miss that, you're going to miss the entire book of Revelation. We have a vision being shown to John of, by an angel from the Lord Jesus Christ things which must shortly come to pass alright so this first beast was the Roman Empire and the second beast is the Roman Catholic Church there is no wiggle room it went this is the transition from a physical empire into a spiritual empire and so when it says here he exercises all the power of the first beast before him <clears throat> speaking of the Roman Catholic Church exercises all the power of the first beast which was the Roman Empire just like what we read in Luke chapter 2 verse 1 when Caesar Augustus had power to make a decree that the whole world should be taxed. All right, and that that's the Roman Emperor. Is the king of the Roman Empire. And so that that gives us definitive proof that the, there was no longer a Greek empire. And the Grecia or Greek empire is mentioned by name by Daniel so we know that there's no longer that third beast in power it has to be now the fourth beast there is no wiggle room you're if you say anything else you're calling Daniel a liar you're that's it that's it you, you can't stray from that You have no options. Your only option to go beyond that is to say Daniel is a liar. Okay? And you're basically calling God a liar. Alright, so to understand this, the first beast being the Roman Empire, the second whose deadly wound was, or I'm sorry, the, the second beast being the Roman Catholic Church, right? So the, the, the deadly wound that was healed is this transition from a Roman uh, from a physical empire into a spiritual empire all right if we go to Revelation 17 the woman represents the spiritual aspect all right? the woman is actually called the the whore let's see where's this at the great whore all right, and there came one of the seven angels again what do we read in Revelation 1 verse 1 we read that the Lord Jesus Christ 
is going to send his angels to John to show us things which must shortly come to pass. And here we have John seeing another angel. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. <laughs> it tells us so plainly. It's amazing. The great whore that sits on many waters. What's that mean? What's that mean? Well, it tells us exactly what that means. And the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Right? And of course, I mean, come on. Is it not obvious that the Roman Catholic Church is all over the world? It's beyond obvious. I don't think I even have to explain that. You ought to know that, right? They are everywhere. They're in Australia. They are in the United States. They're all over Europe and South America, Africa, all nations around all around the world right all nations tongues multitudes peoples they're everywhere it's incredible all right so the angel shows John this uh, the judgment of the great whore and this there's a name written on her forehead Babylon the great so this is in spirit with the first beast of Daniel the first beast, the first king, is the king of Babylon, or the Babylonian kingdom, the Babylonian empire. So the fourth beast is in the spirit of the first beast. Pretty, pretty simple, really. Right? And then, of course, let's go down here. Verse 8, the beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall descended out of the bottomless pit and going to perdition now we're talking about the antichrist here and there's so many there's so much here it's overwhelming but uh, let's go this way Ooh. let's just do this here in second Thessalonians 2 verse 4 it says who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and he calls himself the Pope or that is worshiped so that he as God Pope means the Holy Father sitteth in the temple of God he sits in a temple even though it's not the true temple of God he sits, he sits in a temple of God showing himself that he is God. Now he's not God. Alright? Don't let this stuff confuse you. Right? This is what he's presenting himself as. He's not God. Right? You understand that. When it says showing himself that he's God, it doesn't mean that he's God. He's just showing himself that he's God. So also knowing that when it says so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God this is not actually the true temple of God he's not the true God neither does he sit in the, the true temple of God it's, it's incredible to me that people can't see this they think this means anything but what it actually says it's incredible And they want to twist it, and it's not its not rocket science, man. This is pretty straightforward stuff. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, or that is respected, that is trusted. So that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He's not God. That's, that's it. it there's nobody in the world that even compares to the Pope. Nobody, or nobody, no, there's only the Pope 
could be the Antichrist. It, it's so it's so obvious. It's almost it's like it's almost too obvious. People just don't see it. Well, people don't see it because they don't want to see it. They don't want to believe it. It's it's in, just pure insanity. It's a phenomenon, really. Uh, but it's also the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to happen like this, right? Just like what we read in verse three. Let no man deceive you by any means that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Isn't that interesting? The son of perdition. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Isn't that interesting? The beast that was and is not and yet is. That is clearly the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church right now it's just my my uh, my belief that when Jesus defeated death and rose out of the grave and ascended to heaven that the most powerful entity on earth knew it and they knew they could not top him there's nothing that they could ever do to present themselves as greater than what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. So therefore, instead of trying to outdo the Lord Jesus Christ, they tried to mimic, copy the Lord Jesus Christ and to, uh, what's that word, to, um, I don't know, sabotage maybe, um, to take over. To take over and to present themselves as though they were one of his people when in fact they are enemies of his people and the enemies of God the enemy of me and the enemy of you all right but this is how it's supposed to play out this is the way it's meant to be Right, without this happening, there would not come an end to this world, and there would never be the, the everlasting kingdom to come, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Alright. Alright, so I mean, this is pretty simple stuff, really. Now, this guy, who does not have eyes to see, he just for inexplicably, all right, inexplicably, he says that the Roman Catholic Church is the first beast. All right, so imagine this. You've got Daniel's four beasts, all right? you got the Babylonian Empire. You've got the Medes and Persia Empire. you got the Grecia Empire. And then, after the Greek Empire, he skips the Roman Empire and goes straight into the Roman Catholic Church. So he's got a dead period. Uh, excuse me. He's got a dead period in between the third and fourth king. All right, he's basically saying, for example, Luke chapter 2, verse 1. I mean, it's you've got to be purposely deceitful. I mean, I don't know how you could be so ignorant. To say, well, yeah, Caesar Augustus, he had power and authority to decree that the whole world all the world should be taxed but he didn't have power over the whole world and the Roman Empire was not the fourth beast of Daniel they just you just skip that just forget about it it's like nothing happened 
And so it went from the Greek Empire to the Roman Catholic Church, according to Noah's. You see how illogical that is? These great beasts, which are four, are four kings. So we're going to ignore this king. We're going to go from the Greek Empire into the popery, or popery, or why? I don't know what the word is. The the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. So it goes from Greek Empire, skips the Roman Empire, goes straight in. I mean, even though there's, it doesn't go straight into the Roman Catholic Church. There's a a dead period there, about 300 years. What, 300 years plus the time before baby Jesus was born. This is gone. This is out of control, man. I mean, oh boy, then we get into how, oh my goodness, there's, it's not possible. It is not possible that there's this dead period. Alright, it's not possible. There's no way. No. I get into the whole, I mean, could get into the whole study of, that might be a good idea one of these days. I'm not going to do it now, but, all right, haven't I done this before? Do a whole study of the book of Daniel? It'd be fun, it'd be fun, it'd be fun, wouldn't it? But, you can't have that dead period. You can't skip over the Roman Empire. You can't skip over Caesar Augustus. He is the Roman Emperor. The Roman Empire was in power during the time of baby Jesus and the time Jesus was on the earth. And it was the Romans that had him killed. I'm sorry, excuse me. It was the Romans that killed him. It was the Jews that had him killed. And of course, again, Jesus laid down his life. So, this doesn't make any sense to go from the Greek Empire straight to the, what the Noahs calls the first beast. Can't be, right? And he exercises all the power of the first beast. And he's calling the first beast the Roman Catholic Church. And then another, this, the other beast coming up out of the sea? He's calling the United States? And the United States is causing everybody to worship the, the Catholic Church whose deadly wound was healed alright so uh, that doesn't work either because um, <laughs> the United States was very anti-Catholic this was prominent even I mean when I was young it's not so much anymore but you know um, it was clearly the case in the 70s and 80s because people knew that the Catholic Church was much different than the Christian Church. That was very understood. Even as a child, I understood that. And I could see it reflected in the people around me. The people around me were people that went to the bar. I didn't hang around the church when I was younger. It's just something that society understood. And you know, um, I mean, you could re read all about this if you don't understand it. But you know, uh, JFK, for example, he was a Catholic, and they they were afraid that he couldn't win because he was a Catholic. Uh, Get I mean, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. But the idea is silly especially for us older folk to say that the United States is causing the whole world to be Catholic 
And the whole world was cath was yeah the whole world was Catholic before the United States was even a nation. And then uh, the you know the people from England they came over to the United States and none of this none of this matters but they came over and killed a bunch of the natives and uh, started their own country to break free apparently the story is to break free from or I don't know actually I, I, don't, I don't even know the history I don't know history at all they they came over here to to establish more land and then there was some dispute about the taxes and they said to hell with you we're just gonna stay here and there ain't a doggone thing that you can do about it. and they call that freedom <laughs> and so they they preach freedom people think it means freedom to do what we want no freedom to the, when they say freedom they mean freedom from British authority but nevertheless who cares who cares all right so anyways that's all I just wanted to go over that because this this idea that we went from the Greek Empire skip the Roman Empire that we read about in the New Testament skip it and go right into the Roman Catholic Church which which was established about 380 it's just it's so stupid And the only explanation I can have for why somebody would teach that is because they don't believe what the Bible says. They're trying to obtain information by listening to what other men say. And they're trusting what other men say. So they try to formulate an opinion in their head based on what other men have said. They are ignoring the Word of God. Is there any other possible explanation? Because this explanation that this guy's giving, that the United States is the second beast of Revelation 13, is nonsense. Absolutely nonsense silly all right so anyway that's it that's all i wanted to share with you i mean it's so simple right it's so simple daniel talks about the four beasts all right so we got the babylonian kingdom we got the medes and the persian kingdom and we got the greek kingdom oops and then we got the roman kingdom right babylonian Medes and Persian, Greek, and then a Roman Empire, and then of course, after that, the everlasting kingdom. All right, that's it. Daniel doesn't lie. Daniel doesn't lie. So when we read the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation squares exactly with the book of Daniel and the rest of the Bible. It's amazing. When you're able to connect the dots, you're able to see a lot clearer. And of course, you got to be able to, or you, you, you have to believe what you're reading. Believe that these are the words that come directly from God because they do. These words come directly from God above. If you believe anything else, you're hindering yourself. Why would you believe anything different? Why? Because you don't want to fully trust the Word of God? Why? Why don't you want to fully trust the Word of God? Remember what Jesus says. Jesus says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life right the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life Jesus is the Word of God the words that I speak unto you 
they are spirit and they are life. 